here. Here's a fan running out onto the field. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, that's what he deserves. Yeah. You come out on the field, you're lucky that this is as bad as it gets. Well, Ron Green didn't even see him. What a total idiot. Not to bring up Mike Curtis. Defender to play multiple positions. He's three of three from the floor as Gordon can't connect. Shumpert skies in for the board. And now a fan has run on the floor. And that is going to stop play for a moment. And security tends to him. With 6.24 to go in this second quarter. And Houston. Miggy drives on the left field. Schwarber is on the run. He turns. It's gone. Back-to-back -back home runs for the Tigers. What a start to this series. It sounds like a home game here. This shows the importance of Miguel Cabrera in the lineup, what he can do. Just energizing this crowd, which almost seems like a hometown crowd, like you mentioned. Hamill has thrown strikes in all seven pitches. The Tigers have swung at seven strikes. They've gone back to back home runs, fifth set of back to back home runs this season for Detroit. And now Joe Madden came out, and we'll see what he's going to challenge here. Jerry Davis is the crew chief, the home plate umpire. There's Joe Madden. He quickly came out after that home run. Joe is saying that ball went through the basket as opposed to over the wall and into the basket. I'm thinking to call interference and send Cabrera back to second. So Mickey does not. For a Brazilian D Division football side has saved his team from elimination. With the opposition closing in on the match winner, the clearly dedicated member of the support staff positioned himself next to the posts, snuck onto the field, and blocked a certain goal. With the home team and crowd out for blood, the masseur took off for the safety of the sheds, narrowly escaping under the stands. Well, we appear to have an issue with laser pointers from the stands. You can see off the helmet there of Osweiler, somebody directing a laser. And we've seen it a couple of other times as well. And the NFL security is aware of it, and they're trying to figure out who's doing it and get them out of here. Perhaps that has something to do with the drop passes. Can't have that. And a drive down the left field line. That is going to be a base hit. Battle around. In comes Turner. Here comes Gordon on a double by Hanley. And the Dodgers have some breathing room. They lead 5-2. So Harris gives up the hit. The runs are charged to Daniel Hudson, who has now been charged with three. What was a 2-2 tie is now 5-2 Dodgers in the eighth. Breaking ball, Hanley went down to get it and pulled it into the left field corner. Rimo trying to catch up to it, but no chance. The ball looked like it was touched by a fan. And we will see now what that does to the runners. Kurt Gibson came out. That's such a thoughtless thing to do. Yeah, you drop it now, but you touched it. So the ball should be dead immediately. And that might take a run off the board. So we'll see how they decide. See if D. Gordon is sent back to third. So Gordon awaits the decision. The umpires are going to take a look. Definitely the fan touched the ball. No two ways about that. Big at bat for D. Nine pitches and a base hit to drive in a tiebreaker. All right.
Down the left field line for Hannigan. It is falling fair and headed towards the corner. Bogarts heads for third, and the fan touched it. Interfered with the ball. That's going to be costly for the Red Sox. Bogarts will be brought back to third base as a fan interferes, and now they're checking to see whether or not they're going to challenge this or not. And reaching out on a ball down the left field line. And oh, he definitely had definitely. something to do with that. That's just going to be a double. Runner will not score. No way. Although you never know what would have happened if he didn't touch it. And it's up to the umpire's discretion as to where they place the runners. And I guess John Farrell's argument would be either way Bogart scores, at least that's what he's thinking about. We'll see as he's out there talking to the umpires. He's not officially asked for a challenge here. To me, he could say, judge that, that he could have scored on this ball, but my guess is they won't. Crew chief is Jeff Nelson, who he is talking to. I mean, what goes into this? You're talking about Bogarts. Bogarts is, you know, as fast as can be. The that goes placement of Bogarts. Right, and then because he's fast, the player is fast. Does that go into it? Where he was when right. it where hit he his was glove. when the ball. Okay. Right, and right. could he have scored at that point? I mean, if like a Teixeira was <laughs> the runner, right? There's no way he would score. So the, the being the speed has to go into this, right? Right. The and they're Meanwhile, not going to challenge anything. John Farrell going back to the dugout. And consequently, that fan will be ejected for interfering with the ball in play. We'll never know what would have happened. This was Steve McCarthy versus Tony Wilson. And as you can see, Wilson's getting the worst of it. And it, the fight's about to be stopped when in comes Ma Wilson. Good old Ma Wilson with her stiletto heel. And she was clunched old McCarthy. And that was the end of it. And he went off. Look, there's, you can see it going in. This woman could be the woman to take on Mike Tyson. Because the only, the only fight he ever lost was against his mother-in-law. Play immediately before it is stirring talk today. Quarterback Kyle Orton whiffed on a throw across the middle and immediately turned to the ref, pointing at his eye. Orton told him he was shined by a fan with a laser pointer. It wasn't the first instance. In the third quarter, Bills kicker Dan Carpenter lined up for a 50-yard field goal. And if you take a close look at the knee of the holder, you can see the flickering light of the laser. Carpenter missed the kick, and he was hot. He complained to the ref, who mouthed the words, no, I didn't see it. He reported it, and security, NFL security did a good job, but he, he was all fired up. A day later, like a pro, Carpenter is downplaying the effect of the laser pointer. I mean, I noticed it, yeah, yeah. so that's... I mean, I'm not blaming it for a missed right. kick either, so it's... But his holder, Colton Schmidt, says it was unlike anything he's had to deal with at a critical point of... That ball is hit really well to left field. And... Dahl makes the catch! Or no. Oh, it's gone. That kid, did he reach over the wall? What David Dahl saying? I'm going to take a look at this. I think. Yeah, Walt's coming out. David Dahl gets to the wall as you're taught. That kid reached over. He reached and then, over the wall. And then he gloated. That's not going out. Yeah, I hope he gets kicked out for gloating. Not supposed to show gloat. Gonna be close, but I, I don't think that was gonna go out. Oh, please, nothing would make me happier right now to reverse this on the kid. What was the name of the kid for the Yankees back in the day? Jeffrey yeah. Mayer. It takes them that long to figure it out. They're probably saying it's an out or trying to figure, obviously, interference. They're going to award him a double. 
Out. Yeah. Out. <laughs> out. Now out. out. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Charlie looked right at him and said, what do you got to say now? Oh, that's great. That kid's got a story for the rest of his life. It's the right call. It is. It is. It's a, that's great. Well, I hope I hope David Dahl gets a chance to sign that baseball for the kid after the game. That's hilarious. Hold on, before you even throw him out of here, let, let David sign the ball. They're ejecting him with two with, <laughs> with one out in the ninth inning. I wonder I wonder if he ranks as you know, we'll get Elias Note, youngest kid to get ejected from a baseball game. <laughs> Do you know what? That's great. Yeah, there, there's a part of me that's like <laughs> was over the top. He, I'm not thinking barking at players, but that's fouled off. He will never forget around 5 of 11 in the ninth inning on July 30th when he's sitting out there in left field. Caught a baseball. Talk trash. See you, buddy. Smell you later. He got thrown out. I hope we sit next to him on the. He's not going to be called. First and goal for New England. Toss it to Hogan. Hogan gets hit inside the five by Stefan Gilmore. Some fan threw something right out on the field, too, at about the one yard line. Yeah, initially I thought it might have been a flag, but. I didn't say it because it didn't look yellow. So they've discarded that. And it's now second and goal. Well, it definitely wasn't a flag. Doing the right thing personally, going for the three points. Worsing. It'll be a 20-yard chip shot. Well, I don't believe that was a fake. And I don't know what you do about a snowball hitting your holder just as he tries to place the ball down. That's also very dangerous. Unsportsmanlike and dangerous. But it does not reflect well on the fans here at Mile High Stadium. Kavanaugh looking at bouncing snowballs all around him, trying to get the ball desperately to Russ Francis. It's incomplete in the Broncos. Take over with 11 seconds remaining. Oh, you hate to see that. The actions of one, two, three or four fans casting all kinds of shadows on so many. There's the snowball I spoke of. Had to be distracting. First down, Timber. What a first fading first half for the 49ers. Elway just drops. And the 49ers can do nothing about it. They have no more timeouts. Bill Walsh will talk it over. At halftime, we'll be back. And a fly ball toward the line and left. Franklin coming over in a hurry. Foul ball. And a fan reaches over into the field of play. And so it was Gregorius is going to be out. That Tet with this with the second bare hand. He, I'm telling you what, this guy can flat out play. Made a great catch in the first inning. On a, a, a one hopper bare hand, and then he takes this one right away from Nick Franklin. Well, hang on, hang on. Joe Girardi out talking with uh, John Hirschbeck, and the umpires are going to get together 
and have a little conference here. They're trying to get the Rays to come back out onto the field. The ground crew out there, they want to change out the bases, but everything's being put on hold for a second. Well, did he reach out over the wall and into the field of play? That's the question, because it was close. I'll tell you what, too, he used the, the left hand and the right hand. He, he's ambidextrous. I mean, that's that's borderline. I mean, Nick Franklin's going to catch that, but did, it, did he go past? Yeah, that's going to be uh, the determining factor here is Hirschback uh, breaks up their conference and again talks it over with Joe Girardi. And so they uh, want to take a look at that. So close. And here's the thing. I, I think an ejection hangs in the balance, right? Uh, one would think so. If they come back and rule that, that he reached over, then, I mean, then you got to go. Yeah, so they're ruling on uh, <laughs> whether it's uh, an out. And if it is, then a potential ejection. <laughs> That's exactly right. I just like the fact that the guy made two heck, I mean, two great plays. With each with, you know, a different hand. So the play under review, and is that left hand reaching out over that uh, imaginary line that would project up from the stands? Left hand goes out, and I'm going to say that uh, from that point, that left hand is in the field of play. But we'll see what they say. Oh. I think the fans had an initial reaction because the uh, momentum carried Franklin's glove hand into the stands, but uh, the fan reached over that uh, imaginary line, and he is out. And he may be out of the stadium. Yeah. That, that may have been the call that got him ejected. So that's going to end the inning. The Yankees leave two after that review. And uh, they're going to call it a day down there. He's on his way out of here. He had to wait until the call was made, and now they walk him out. 8-3 Rays. Drifting foul. Miller chasing after it. Miller collides, oh. and he can't make the catch. They're calling it a catch. We'll take a look at it again. Yeah, that's a good call. That is a good call. Man clearly interferes. He was right there to make the catch. That's a good call. And it looks like they might want some further discussion about this. Looks like the replay gear has been brought out. Fortunately, what I'm looking at this is Brad, and fortunately he's okay because it looks as if he ends up hitting his chest right in the middle of the wall. That's his hip. He was on the ground for a few seconds. Glad to see him get up. Yeah. Well, Astros fans should never be allowed in the front row. <laughs> Take a look at his hip again as he slams into the wall. That's padded, but it's not that padded. No, it's not. And he, he's, he will feel that.